In this video, we are going to talk about the Canadian road signs. We'll talk about driving during winter in Canada. We will talk about rules and regulations against drink driving. We'll talk about speed limits. We'll talk about driving speed limits. And finally, we will touch on equipment. Hi guys, welcome back to Accord TV. And if you're new here, my name is Accord. And on this channel, we talk a lot about immigration plus everything else. Now let's go back and talk about the road signs. Road signs in Canada and in the USA are very much alike but do not recognize the standards used in the manual on uniform traffic control devices. That is MUTCD are there too within the USA. Canadian road signs are very much independent taking on unique differences such as shapes, colors, type faces or arrows. On the road signs, the first one, there's what is called regulatory signs. Regulatory signs give directions which road users must obey. These signs are mainly rectangular or square in shape with a white or black background and black, white or colored letters. They will also have a circle or square type colored border, green meaning that the activity inside the border may or must be obeyed. A red circle border with a line through means the activity shown is not allowed. Signs will include no parking, non-permitted directions or keep right. So if you see this sign anywhere and you are not supposed to park at a specific place, then you must remember that you must not park around that space. And if there's a turning maybe that you need to take, but you can see one of these signs around that area again, you must also remember and adhere to the rule that you are not permitted to take that direction or maybe you're not allowed to take right then you must not take or keep right so regulatory signs are around canada and when you're driving around you'll just get to see them the way i have just described them and you'll also remember that these signs are actually like i said rectangular or square in shape with a white or black background and black white or colored letters so as you're driving as you're gaining your experience within time you'll just get to you know recognize and remember the colors and just know that uh, there are regulatory signs whenever you see them now let's talk about the second one which is high occupancy vehicle signs hov high occupancy vehicle signs Lanes that have HOV marked along a lane and posted on the road sign allow public vehicles such as buses or passenger vehicles with a specified minimum number of passengers to use this lane. So these road signs, like I've just said, only allows buses or passenger vehicles with a specified minimum number of passengers to use this lane so again when you're driving about canada you'll just get to know that um, public vehicles are only allowed to use the hov lanes and you'll just get to understand as you drive you may not be able to get that right first or second time but then before you get to the road you'll really need to take your time and really study what these road signs are about so you don't get or land yourself in trouble now moving on to the third one which is the warning signs you know literally warning do not do this do not take right do not take left do not drive over here do not drive on this road or whatever it has to uh, do with warning signs just like the name suggests the warning signs warn road users of any potential danger changes in road conditions or hazards ahead shapes are commonly diamond shaped colored in either yellow or fluorescent yellow and with the exception of a few signs that have a square or rectangular shape. So please note that the shape is in diamond and colored in yellow or fluorescent yellow and sometimes signs could be in square or rectangular shape. So don't just stick on to the diamond shape. You say, no, 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 I had these warning signs are supposed to be diamond. No, remember that they can be diamond in shape, they can be square in shape, and they can also be rectangular in shape. And these signs, warning signs, most of the time will tell you if um, there's a problem on the road, maybe there's someone who is not being kind to people, harmful. You know, that's something that could easily put your life in danger or something that could risk you as an individual so these signs are there to alert you on that if there are weather conditions or if there's any sort of hazard ahead these signs will for sure guide you on what is happening along the road or rather ahead whatever you are headed to 
and then let's move on to the next one which is temporary condition signs temporary condition signs won't road users of temporary conditions along the road such as constructions lane closures detours or traffic control officers these signs are diamond shaped with an orange background and black text or symbol yeah so sometimes it's good to know when you're driving then you're aware that there's a police officer right ahead please remember that this particular road sign the temporary condition signs are diamond shaped and they also have an orange background and black text or symbols so i think these are very beneficial signs because they tell you about the condition of the road and especially if there are constructions depending on the speed you're driving at if you're aware that there's construction happening ahead then you'll just naturally or definitely reduce your speed and that will keep you safe while driving on the canadian roads and the last one is the information signs information signs provide road users with distances street names directions attractions or facilities they are generally found with a green background with white text but depending on the information being provided colors and shapes will vary okay so for the information signs like i've just said uh, colors and shapes do vary and then um, you see even when you are taking directions let's say you're pre pretty new in the city you are living in and you want to go to a certain place then you at least you need to know the name of the streets or maybe you're going to visit a friend of yours you need to know the name of the streets and the direction you are taking and maybe attractions or facilities or places that you may need to visit information signs will of course help sort you out and then now let's move on and talk about winter driving safe driving is always important right that's for all of us or for anyone who is driving or anyone who intends to drive but being on the road during winter warrants extra precautions because you have to be careful why the roads get slippery and your vision is blurred so you just have to be super super careful when you're driving during winter say a lot slow down and stay in control the three key elements of safe winter driving which you must always keep in mind when you're driving especially on the canadian roads drive according to highway and weather conditions you should maintain a safe following distance between you and the vehicle in front of you to avoid situations where you may have to break suddenly and remember when you're driving over winter the roads are super slippery so if you're driving too close to the person in front of you should they break or something happens and then they have to make a sudden stop then of course you're going to just drive into them so that's why you're being advised to keep a safe distance between you and the person who is driving ahead of you let's talk about the rules and regulations against drink driving penalties for dwi driving while impaired that is is a criminal offense in canada heavy penalties apply to drivers found to be over the allowable prescribed limit of 0.08 mg per 100 ml of blood okay so if you're found driving on the canadian roads assuming that you're a permanent resident or you're just visiting that alone could result into you being deported because then you'll be posing a risk not to yourself but to other road users as well so how about the driving speed limits in canada frequent speed checks are carried out by authorities in canada using radars speed traps and speed cameras to ensure speeds are obeyed by motorists okay so when you're driving around the urban areas like built up areas you are expected to drive at 50 kilometers per hour if you're driving in rural roads like outside towns then you should be driving between 60 to 80 kilometers per hour and if you are on motorways you are supposed to drive between 80 to 100 kilometers per hour talking about equipments whilst there are no laws regarding equipment you must carry with you in the vehicle it is important to make sure you are prepared for whatever driving conditions you may endure you see you may get a puncture or maybe you, your gas finishes on the way you don't have fuel or the car lights just drop off you know anything can happen on the road okay so just make sure that all the equipments you need or all the equipments you may need as a driver are in the car not forgetting including the fire extinguisher just in case your car starts smoking and you see some sort of fire or anything but the bottom line is 
just remember to carry all the equipment that drivers need whenever you're driving a car. So child safety seats are required for children weighing 9 kgs or less. Children weighing between 9 to 18 kgs must use a forward facing child seat and children weighing between 18 to 36 kgs and with a height of up to 145 centimeters must use a booster seat. Okay guys, I feel like I've bombarded you with a lot of information. As you ponder on that, take your time, think about it. You can watch the video again just to make sure or save it for future use. Anything that works for you. I love you guys so much. Thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in the next one.